Hello everyone, thanks for checking out today's video. Welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris, we talk all about koi ponds and waterfalls, aquatic plants, construction, uh, design, um, aquatic plants, pond filtration, the whole bit here. I've got a ton of videos for you guys, all broken down to different topics, different categories. Um, in the playlists here on the channel. So um, check it out. Hopefully it can help you uh, navigate your way around and find something that you know you may be looking for or can find helpful. Um, I also have a website at www.pondscapesandmore.com where I have a whole bunch of information on different products and pictures and videos of work I've done in the past and a really cool section called Ponds Around the World. Um, which I encourage you to send me a picture and I would love to post it there on my website for everybody to see so we can see what ponds look like from all over the world. So I encourage you to um, participate and send me a picture. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but anyway, we're going to get on with today's video here. Um, today's video, I'm just talking about a topic that I, I, I want you to understand that there can be a big problem in doing this, okay? So I've had clients in the past say, oh, I want to get some water lilies for my pond, but, um, you know, they're like 50 40 50 dollars a piece. They're so expensive. You know, there's a natural lake just, you know, down the block from my house, and there's water lilies growing in there. I'm just going to go there and dig up a couple, throw them in a pot, and put them in my pond. I can save a lot of money like that. Well, <laughs> be careful, <clears throat> okay? Um, the problem with that is, yes, you're gonna save money, absolutely, um, by not buying the plant. But it can cost you a heck of a lot more money down the road if you bring in some kind of parasite, bacteria, fungi or something with it that's going to um, infect your pond and kill all your fish. Okay, so we need to be really careful about this. Any kind of, you know, pond plants, aquatic plants that are growing out in a wild natural pond someplace, okay, are usually growing around the edges of the pond, right, in shallower water where there's all kinds of muck and mud and decaying, rotting vegetation, leaves, right? All kinds of gross, disgusting stuff growing along the edges, the borders of a natural pond in the shallow water. So if you go in there and you dig up all that muck and garbage that's growing there and bring that into your pond, God only knows what you're bringing with it, all right? <clears throat> so you're taking a real chance. If you are going to do something like that, you know, um, you have to treat these plants, wash them all down, and perhaps kind of um, put them in a separate isolation tank for a couple weeks and treat them with, you know, um, chemicals that are going to kill parasites and bacteria and funguses and stuff before <laughs> you put it into your pond. All right. So is the effort really worth it? Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's you have to really be careful when you do stuff like that. Now, that's not to say that if you go to your local garden center or pawn shop or whatever, order it online, um, that what you are getting is going to be 100% clean, you know, either, okay? Um, we never really know. And anytime you have a nice established pond and you go out and you add new plants to it, you add new fish to it, <clears throat> you never know what you're bringing in with it. So ideally, to be able to quarantine fish and plants and stuff in separate tanks and treat them medically, you know, for all these pathogens um, for a couple weeks before you put it in your pond is absolutely the ideal situation. However, 
I don't know of anybody who actually does that, including myself. All right. Um, all I can say is that you probably are much safer to buy, you know, those lilies, those aquatic plants and those fish from your local pond store or garden center um, rather than, uh, you know, out of a wild natural lake or pond someplace, okay? Um, especially the fish, right? I, I know that the people, you know, the stores around me that sell fish <clears throat> do treat them, do medicate them, and try to ensure that when you purchase it and put it in your pond, the fish is going to be as healthy as possible. Um, you know, buying something out of the lake, uh, you know, picking something out of a lake and bringing it in, <laughs> you're taking a big chance, okay? <clears throat> now, not only plants, but fish as well. I've had people occasionally who, <clears throat> excuse me, will take their kids fishing, right? They go out fishing, they catch a nice bass, right? Or they catch, you know, a couple little bluegills or, you know, perch or whatever. And, you know, or a trout, and they want to put them in their pond. So they want to bring them home for the kids and throw their fish in the pond. Again, you're taking a big chance. You don't know what's coming in with it. Um, I did have a client years back that went out trout fishing and caught a couple, you know, really nice rainbow trout. And he wanted to come and put them in his pond. The problem is trout really like colder water, very well oxygenated water and moving water, okay? They're not gonna do well in a pond in the summer where, you know, it, the water temperature is 85 degrees and, you know, so they did not survive. The other thing we have to be careful about with bringing in fish like bass and trout and, and even catfish, okay, out, out of the natural ponds, is the fact that they can grow quite large and they are predatory, all right? Bass, trout, catfish will eat other fish. Like, absolutely, all right? If they can fit it in their mouth, they'll eat it. So you may go out there and buy a, uh, catch a really nice bass out of the lake by you and say, I want to bring them in my pond, and then find that a lot of your little goldfish, a lot of little koi, everything are disappearing, <laughs> and your bass is growing quite large, okay? Catfish, too, really, really bad. They get huge. You know, catfish can grow, you know, three feet long. Their mouths are, heads are huge. They can swallow anything, like big, okay? So they will eat other fish in your pond. Um, so <laughs> not only are you taking a risk of what kind of parasites or bacterias and stuff you may be bringing in with it, um, you're also taking a risk on them being predators to your you know fish in your pond so um, not really a, a good idea all right um, you know it, it all sounds good it all it makes sense that hey you know rather than go buy all these plants at the garden center and spend a hundred dollars on all this stuff I can go down the street and pull them out of this you know swamp for nothing <laughs> All right, but just be aware of the dangers that that may bring with it. And, you know, in the long run, it can cost you a lot of money. It's not cheap to treat a pond for parasites and bacterial infections. Um, you know, and you kill most of your fish, which, all right, I mean, it's not only money, but you're killing all your fish as well. So it's, it can be a really, really bad situation. So always try to get your plants and your fish from a reputable source um, that you can trust. And, you know, if possible, quarantine, all right? Um, if not, you know, watch your pond, your fish, um, for a few weeks after you put a new fish in there and make sure that everything is normal. There's no sores, there's no ulcers on the fish. They're not flashing a lot. Um, and by flashing, I mean they, they scrape on the bottom of the pond, okay, because their skin is irritated and they, you know, they scrape and, and rub on the side of the ponds. Um, 
just watch for behavior like that that may be signs that there is something wrong <laughs> okay um, but uh, yeah so that's basically it I just wanted to give you a short little video here today warning you of this because every once in a while I come across you know something like that and I, I was like tell the people no don't do that you do not want to do that you know um, spend the money <laughs> buy the lilies from a reputable source, wash them down, make sure they're clean and all before you put them into your pond. And, you know, hopefully then you can enjoy it and not have problems down the road. All right. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, if the video helped you out, um, you know, please hit the little thumbs up, the like button, um, subscribe to the channel. If you're into all this stuff, there's a ton of videos here for you guys. I've been professionally building koi ponds now for over 25 years so I've put together this channel to share with you as much information as I can and things that I've learned and done um, hopefully to help you out and answer some questions and make your pond keeping a little more successful so thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you back soon in another video take care have a great day bye